Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. I've been meaning to do this video for some time because I have over 2,000 videos on YouTube and I would guess that almost a third of those videos are on Lightroom. And in many of those Lightroom videos, I demonstrate how I would go about doing an edit in Lightroom. Well, as many of you know, over the past year or so, Adobe has added AI masking to Lightroom. And what I have found is that this new AI masking has caused me to drastically change how I go about editing images in Lightroom. And in today's video, I want to demonstrate that for you. Now, of course, in older versions of Lightroom, there was some masking. They called them range masks. There was color range, luminance range, and depth range. Those are still in Lightroom, but we really didn't have any other masks. We had tools. We had a brush tool, a graduated filter, and a radial filter. And typically, the way I would go about editing an image is I would do global adjustments first. Then I would add a tool, maybe a brush stroke or a graduated filter. Sometimes I'd use a color range or luminance range mask. But that was kind of my order of events. Global adjustments first, tools later. What I found is that with the new AI masking, I turn that upside down. I often do masking first, then global adjustments at the end. Let me demonstrate. I have this image here. Now, one thing I do first, no matter what version of Lightroom I've used, is I crop and or straighten first. As you can see, the image is a little crooked. So I'm going to go to the crop tool and I'm just going to straighten this very quickly. All right, so we'll just straighten it right away. Now, that I do first. Now, in the past, I would go right to the basic tab and start processing there. Instead, now, what I'll do is I'll go to masking, and for this image, I'm going to select the sky, but I really don't want to edit the sky first. I want to edit everything else but the sky, because um, if you look at the image, you could see that the sky is exposed correctly, I exposed for the sky, but everything else is underexposed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to invert this by clicking this little checkbox right here. And now I have everything but the sky selected. Then I'm going to go to the tone and I'm going to increase the exposure a bit. Then we're going to kind of do what I typically do, bring highlights down, open up shadows, um, white, black a little bit. Then we're going to go to the color and we're going to add some saturation. Then we're going to go to presence and I like to work these from the bottom up. There's no need to use dehaze in this with this image. So I'll go right to clarity and add some clarity and add some texture and even go to detail. I'll add some sharpness. This was shot at ISO 64. So there really is no noise to speak of. So that's my first mask. Now my second mask, I'll go up here, create a new mask and I'm going to select the sky this time. And with the sky, Typically, I like to add drama to the sky or accentuate the drama that was in the sky. And I'll go right to presence for that. And again, I'll work from the bottom up. Um, sometimes dehaze a little bit, but not in this case, I don't think. We'll go to clarity and we'll go to texture. Then I'm going to jump up to tone and we'll add some contrast. Then I'm going to go to color and I want to warm up the highlights a little bit, but just Generally, I'm just going to go to the temp slider here and just kind of slide that to the right a little bit just to warm up the tones a little bit in the sky. And then we'll add some saturation. Okay, so far so good. Now I'm going to do another mask. The subject of this image is the lighthouse. I want to do some editing to the lighthouse. So I'm going to create a new mask and we're going to get an object mask. I think I want to do the little rectangle here. What we'll do is we'll go right to here and we'll draw this rectangle over the lighthouse. Uh, Lightroom will use its AI technology to select the lighthouse. And here I'm going to then again jump down to presence and we'll add some clarity and some texture and we'll go to color and we'll add some saturation right here. And let's go to tone and let's just see what contrast might do. Maybe just shadows a little bit. So, so far, so good. So 
I started out using masking first. Now I'll go over and do some global adjustments. Let's go to the basic tab and um, my shadows and highlights are okay, but I do want to get a real white and black point. I'm going to do that the way I typically do it. I'm going to hold the option key on my Mac. It's an alt key on a PC. Go to the whites, move that to the right till I see some colors bleeding through. Then I'm going to back that off. And then I'll similarly go to the blacks, do the same thing, holding the option key. And that actually looks pretty good. I don't have to move that one at all. Maybe we'll add some overall clarity a little bit. Um, we'll add some vibrance in this case. Or yeah, maybe we'll try some saturation. Yeah. And then we'll go down to the effects and we'll add a darker vignette. And that's it. I'm done. There's before and there's after. So the real change here is I changed the order of events. Instead of doing global adjustments first, then going and doing the old tools, you know, brush, graduated filter, radio filter. Every now and then I do a color range mask or a luminance range mask. Instead of doing that at the end, I now do that masking first. Then I do global adjustments after. So I'm going to be doing a series of videos where I do different types of images and demonstrate the new way that I've been going about editing images. That is the upside down edit, uh, doing masking first, then doing global adjustments. Of course, we started out with something relatively simple like this. In future videos, I'll do things a little bit more complex. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.